Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the Dyson. Yes, we're back in the vacuum cleaner itself and we are going to uh, talk about a new build that I decided to try and uh, give, it, give you guys a little gameplay preview of it and I think this is actually a pretty good hybrid build. So we are still running Takio Takagi. We are running Haruna and Hipper as our inspirations. If you don't have Haruna, you can obviously go with, I would recommend something Accuracy or Palo de Rebel for, for reload um, here instead, or Arthas, or not Arthas, because you're not going to run the um, the plane. So yeah, definitely Palo de Rebel would be my, my thing if you don't have Haruna. That way you can buff the reload of these, these guns a little bit. But uh, we are running Flammable Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, and Properly Meticulous. A, per a perk that we don't run very often. Uh, normally we would be running something like uh, the Reaching Out XXL here, but we don't need the extra range in this particular ship. Uh, we're going to use our speed to get up relatively close and have our secondaries there to protect us from the destroyers. We're also running Fight Fire with Fire for obvious reasons. Okay. Uh, first slot, we're not running aiming systems. We're actually running Secondary Battery Mod 2, which gives us a little bit more firing range and dispersion on our secondaries. We are running the uh, steering gears mod to give us a little bit of help when it comes to the, the steering in this ship, which is awful. And then we're running concealment system mod to get a, uh, allow us to break contact or get up close when we need to. And then we are running these main battery mod 3, which is going to slow down our turret traverse, but it also allows us to have a faster reload, which kind of makes up for the fact that we're not having um, Palo de Rebel there to help with the reload on these guns all right so what does that all add up to well simple uh we are running the uh, secondary the enhanced secondary targeting mod this module is a unique module to this ship um it is probably or it is more powerful than every other secondary module in in the game so if you guys get a chance run this sh for sure because it is it is disgusting what the secondaries can do to protect you against destroyers and stuff like that in certain situations okay um but the biggest change here is going to be our mains and our secondary so you still have 18.5 kilometers of range they reload in 26 seconds so still pretty solid there 180 degree turn time is 30.7 seconds so still serviceable it's not fast but it's not slow for a battleship either um, HE shell maximum damage doesn't change. The AP maximum damage is 14,160. Um, the secondaries. The secondaries fire out to 9.7 kilometers, reloading in 5.4 seconds, and doing 2,100 damage with 8% chance to set fires. And then the 140 mil, they reach out to 9.7 as well, reloading in 7.2 with a 2,400 damage and a 10% chance to set fires. So because of the extra... Um, like we, we don't get the full range of the ship, but we don't get the uh, full accuracy of the ship. It's a hybrid build. So we have literally built a hybrid sweeper here. And I think this is probably going to be your, your better build just due to the fact that it allows you to have more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Versatility. So you can get up, up close when you need to. You, you have the uh, comfort of having that secondaries, but you also you also have that uh, decent accuracy and reload of the main guns, which honestly, when this thing's built for, for full accuracy, it is disgusting. Um, I've talked about the Amagi and stuff many a times. I love the Amagi, uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely one of those things where it will troll you. Where this thing, if you build for full accuracy, it doesn't really troll you ever. Like it's pretty much dead on accurate most of the time, which is insane. But uh, also you only get eight guns, so a little bit lacking there. But uh, overall, maneuverability still, I mean, 13.6 second rudder shift is better than nothing. Um, but the 1100 meter turning circle is the biggest problem. And that's why I say that this thing isn't a very good brawler. It's a very good mid-range ship. Um, it can snipe if you go for accuracy. So you could go with a long range sniper. Uh, but mid-range, I think, is probably where this thing is most comfortable. Um, getting just inside secondary range to allow those secondaries to, to start fires and stuff like that is going to be where you want to be. But no further. 
okay? Um, and then concealment's still the same at 13.6 as well. All right, so with that being said, let's get straight into the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on Shatter, and we are in the Dyson, and we are running the hybrid build that we uh, just showed you guys. Now, we get very good... Um, is it matchmaking? I guess we go matchmaking. We get pretty good matchmaking for this particular build because there's really not a lot to be afraid of out there. There's a lot of uh, squishy ships, a lot of battleships that are strong, but at the same time, not scary when you're in a t uh, top tier battleship. And uh, the Dyson is going to showcase just why that is. Now, I will say this. Um, this game had even more potential to be absolutely insane had one thing not happened, but we'll, we'll go over that when we see it. But uh, we're going to push off to the right side, and, uh, you know, you guys know the deal. Win our side, move forward, do our best, and uh, see where it leaves us. I want you guys to pay attention to the people that are around me and what they do during the match, and uh, then figure out whether or not uh, you agree with me or disagree with me. Because I want to know down in the comments below. Don't forget also, uh, make sure you guys, if you guys are enjoying the videos, punch that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we need all the help we can get on the channel. Um, March was a awful month for the channel as I, I explained. So uh, it's going to be a rough, rough month to get through April. But hey, it is what it is. Ups and downs, all that good stuff. First shot out the gate does not leave us with a lot of confidence. 1400 damage. You love to see it. Uh, bow in ship that was sitting still and we only land one shell uh, not ideal but we're not going to sit around and, and rest on our laurels we're going to go forward we're going to get to the outside edge and we're going to start to push in from there um, the fact that we only saw one cruiser and we're looking at the mini map and we can see the fact that most of their battleships are all clumped together at the back side on the it'd be top left of the screen so with that in mind we don't really have anything to fear over here. A cruiser is not really something that I fear in the Dyson, especially a tier seven cruiser. Um, so we're gonna push forward and do everything we can to get rid of them. And in the process, I'm hoping that our teammates grow a pair and, and push with us on this side. We have a Peter bag that's in, a, in the cap already. He's trying to get the cap, which is great. We got a battleship right behind us, which I believe was an Iowa question mark it's either that or a Bismarck I can't remember but enemy enemy Schroeder starts pushing forward um, right into the the Peter bag Peter bag should be able to reverse out of the way uh, but watch what the Schroeder does next like we push forward around this edge and the Schroeder just goes like right at the Peter bag this is a stupid play by the Schroeder why because he doesn't have torpedoes so charging down a cruiser that does have torpedoes probably not your best bet Right? Like, I don't understand the thought process there. But then again, this is World of Warships Legends. There probably isn't a thought process there. But either way, we come around the corner and the worst possible thing that we could run into is over here without ever being spotted. And that is the Rupert. But, we don't panic. We just get, get to work, right? Both ships are fully capable of removing each other with torpedoes. Both ships have pretty nasty guns. Both ships have pretty nasty secondaries. This is a perfect example of what happens when like meets like, right? When two ships of similar build come together, it's going to come down to who the better commander is. And when you look at what I'm doing versus what he's doing, you can see real quick that this guy is just simply not that guy, right? He does not have any idea what he is doing. He's simply trying to get his torpedoes off, and we can pretty well anticipate where those torpedoes are going to be coming from when he launches them, and we can dodge for the most part. He launches the first set way too early. He never really gets good damage out of his guns. Uh, we get our torpedoes away. And you can see I'm trying to get angled again so that we can limit how many torpedoes we take. And we take two of them right on the belt. 14,000 damage, but he goes down. It's actually 15,000 damage, but he goes down. So one top tier battle cruiser with torpedoes and secondaries gone, right? He he screwed that he screwed that engagement up completely. 
But that was a good showcase of what our secondaries can do to help us out. Uh, we had two fires set on the guy. We also got the torpedo hit when we needed. But you cannot sell out to give the torpedoes away on this ship. Because if you do, you're going to get punished for it. We did lose a lot of health in that engagement. But when you're talking about, you know, peers peer-to-peer -peer engagements like that where they're very very similar ships with very similar styles i i come away with all of about three quarters of my health that's that's not bad i'll take that now here we've got a good look at the baltimore over the top of the island now one thing i want you guys to keep in mind is that uh we are still pushing forward our teammates are not they they're kind of hanging back for some reason um I, I, one of the things that you got to watch in this ship is that you're faster than you think. Um, especially if you're running the engine boost. So, keep that in mind. You will outrun your support. And I think that's actually what ends up happening here in this particular match. I could have slowed down, allowed my team to, to catch up to me, and we could have pushed in together. Instead, I did not do that. I kind of rushed headlong into what is going to be the entire enemy team. And if you look at the rest of the team, we've got two battleships that have went to the mid. They're broadside to both of these guys that are in the middle. But fortunately for those battleships, I'm here to try to take some of the pressure off of them, right? I'm going to try to keep these guys from being able to focus those guys that are in the middle, which is going to allow us to have the advantage. There's an Amagi right around the corner. There's the Baltimore. There's the um, Bismarck. I'm not scared of a Bismarck at all. And you can see... We're in range, the secondaries are doing their thing. This is where you want to be in the ship. Just inside secondary range, allowing those secondaries to do what they do, and then still far enough outside of uh, most danger that we're, we're okay. Slapping the Balti as he overangles. He gets very lucky that I didn't, I, did, I let him a little bit too much there. We hit towards the front of the ship. If we hit midship there, he's dead. There's no doubt in my mind that that would have been a kill shot on the Balti. But we're focusing the Balti down because he's got DPM, right? Something that the, the Bismarck isn't really very good at. So we wait for him to beach. We go ahead, we take the shot, aiming for him to bounce off the island. Secondaries are doing what they got to do, and we absolutely slap him and send him home. Now, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't paying attention to what the Amagi was doing here. Uh, our guys that were in the middle have now charged all the way through and are now coming up on my flank, where I am now all by my lonesome versus everybody. And as soon as I saw these torpedoes, I knew I was in trouble. But I was hoping that I could death strike or get rid of this Amagi as quick as possible. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get any citadels on him. His turtleback armor protecting him there. We get the, the uh, torpedoes away for the uh, Amagi. We end up taking a couple of torpedoes from the Jaeger. And uh, yeah, we, we do get a, a, a heal off. But unfortunately, it's a Jaeger. He gets a reload button. And uh, yeah, that's not going to end well for us. But... We are going to end up taking down the, the Amagi. We've done everything in our power to give us the advantage. Um, if, if I could complain about anything in this particular match, it is the fact that the um, enemy or the friendly battleships that went in and grabbed the Bravo cap ended up going all the way through and around the island instead of holding their ground and fighting um, the Amagi and stuff from there. Um, if they stayed there and came through the gap, I think they would have probably been more useful there. Um, the cap's not making a, a darn bit of difference, so capturing that base literally meant nothing. Gets you a little bit of extra XP, but uh, we finished the game with 165,000 damage, 3 kills, 133 secondary hits, a couple of torpedo hits for good measure after we finished off the Amagi, uh, and the enemy has no chance to win this match. So we did everything in our power to win this. Uh, and you can see that the radar cruiser uh, that we had with us this entire time is now all the way try back across the map trying to attack a battleship instead of coming with B around the, the map and trying to clearly get rid of the destroyer who is currently just annihilating every battleship that decided to show up after I was dead. This is the problem, right? This is one of the things that I, I, had, I have to call out because you're in a radar cruiser, right? You cannot drop off and go hunting a battleship down all the way on the other side of the map when there's a destroyer on the loose that is destroying your battleships. Like, you, you gotta have some situational awareness. And so, the only thing that this cruiser really did is uh, ended up killing the Schroeder, I believe, right? Because Schroeder was dumb dumb and just charged straight into a torpedo cruiser. But then it didn't really do anything after that. It, it kind of like stayed back, didn't shoot at anything, went all the way across the map to target a battleship late in the game. That means absolutely nothing. 
uh, Jaeger ends up just sitting here and just annihilating everybody on our team. You got fast reloading, fast torpedoes that don't do a lot of damage, but if you land enough of them, they hurt and they cause floods. And so, yeah, the, the Jaeger is just running rampant. So uh, you'll see me in chat right now. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, dude, the, the Peter bag kind of screwed our entire team here uh, by, by sending everybody all the way across the map to go after a battleship that meant absolutely nothing. If he'd have stayed near, and now he radars, right? Like, this is the situational awareness of the guy. He's radaring all the way back there, okay? The, the destroyer is torpedoing the battleships that are nine kilometers from the Peter bag, and he's radaring now. Make sense? So, no chance he's ever gonna get to radar that destroyer, um, but fortunately, this game's pretty much over anyway. But unfortunately for our battleships, uh, they're still going to be faced with the wrath of the, the Jaeger, unfortunately. Uh, but either way, I think this is a better build for the ship. Um, and the funny thing is right at the end of this match, you'll see somebody pop up in chat that, that runs their mouth. And of course, it would be the, uh, the person that does like absolutely nothing in the match. Like, it, it's all it always is when somebody's like pushing and doing their job and getting rid of everybody and then yeah so you can see he jumps in chat right there he says something uh cheeky and then leaves he knew he knew the game was over so he knew that that was the only thing he'd be able to say right like there would be no response but uh top of the leaderboard 2600 of course the person that had to be cheeky is halfway down the leaderboard shocker Real, real useful, but uh, we do our job, and uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.